Abinawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash, Haya, Shemka, Yahawa, Malakovka, Tabaha, Ratzaka, Haya, Aisha, Baratiza, Kawa, Haya, Bashemayim, Natalanawa, Laham, Kal, Yawam, Masalach Nawa, Habawaf Nawa, Kasalach Nawa, Habawaf Yawa, Walaa, Tabiyai Nawa, Banusayawan, Abal, Hawashai Nawa, Mayan, Rai, Kaya, Laka, Hamalakwaf, Waha Allah, Waha Tapuraf, Lai Wulamium, Amen. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, and forgive our debtors, and lead us not temptation, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the blessed for Israel, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Shal, Ha, Racha, Shal, Yahushai, La, Dabar, Amafka, Ba, Kodash, Saparka, Warabium, Amawangium, Warabium, Ahabium, Warabium, Rapayim, Warabium, Salakium, Wahatazaya, Aya, Ma, Kal, Rayam, Babukisha, 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 Yahawa, Bashim, Yahawashai, the water, Amen. We ask you how about Shemil Shah to please bless the nation of Israel, to give us more love, more compassion, more strength, and to protect us from the ways of Satan through the spirit of Yahweh about Shemil Shah. The water to what I will am. Amen. It's the curse upon the heathens. Yahweh. Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Shalak, Rayem, Wa, Anashim, Wa, Abadim, Wa, Haragim, Wa, Mashapatim, Al, Kal, Adawamim, Wa, Gawamim, Wa, Ayab Yab Nawa, Babukisha, 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 Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, the water, Amen. We ask you how about Shemel Shah to please send death and destruction and wrath and righteous judgment against the heathens, the Edomites, and all the heathens that come against the nation of Israel. The water, the wub, I will um, Amen. Ha! Sabbath class. We always want to start off with this. Let's get Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord said. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord said, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Read on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right, so the Lord says six days you shall do all your labor, all your works, right? And these six days, the first day is supposed to be Sunday, right? If any of y'all got a phone, y'all check your calendars, look at your calendar on the phone, start from the left. The first day you're going to see on the calendar is Sunday. The last day is Saturday. And that's the white man showing the trickery and the mockery for the Israelites. Because he knows the first day is Sunday, but he tells you the first day is Monday. Why? Because it's a goal for him to get you to do what? To not keep the Sabbath. Friday evening to Saturday evening, that's sundown to sundown. That's the start of the Sabbath. So yesterday, Friday evening, once it hits sundown, which is nighttime, which mainly in Chicago is like 7, 7.30. That's the start of the Sabbath. So from that 
From that sundown all the way to tonight, when the sundown hits again, which is around 734, that's the end of the Sabbath. Con? Huh? You In it, thou shalt do any, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Right? So this is a law. The first five books of the Bible is laws. And one of the laws is that we're supposed to keep the Sabbath a day of rest. But what white man, what Esau does, he makes sure, especially on a Saturday, hey, he'll double your paycheck. Just to make sure you work on the Sabbath so you can break the laws of your God. This man is wicked as hell. And how do we know this is the law? Because the Most High set this from the beginning. Let's get Genesis chapter 2. That's why what's happening to America right now? The economy is collapsing. Right? All the banks is filling. More than 200 banks are starting to fill. Why? Because the Hebrew Israelites are starting to wake up and keep the laws of God finally the correct way. We've been stuck in America for 400 years. And the only reason why we're not out of here is because we don't want to listen to the Most High God and repent and keep the commandments. That's all we had to do. The reason why we got put in America is because we broke God's commandments. The only way to get the hell out of America, out of this wicked captivity, which is slavery in a damn prison cell, is to keep God's commandments. All right? Uh, bring it out. Uh, it's the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 1. But anybody have to say come? We're on Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. <laughs> Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, and on the seventh day, you know, God ended his work. Right, even the Lord ended his work. You know, which he had made. You know, and he rested. And he what? And he rested. The Lord did what? And he rested. And the Lord rested. Right, you know. On the seventh day. On the seventh day. So if God is resting on the seventh day, you're supposed to be doing the same thing as well. Are we as our father? Huh? Uh -huh. Now check this. They say, hey, God rested on the seventh day. That means he was probably tired. The Lord won't get tired. The Most High is the immortal. Ancient. The ancient of days. Right? And to prove that, let's get um, Isaiah chapter 40. In verse 28. And we'll Genesis chapter 2. The Most High God, the God of the Bible, is not a hypocrite. Whatever he does, he expects you to do the same thing. Same as with Christ. Whatever Christ does, he expects the people to do the same thing as well. But with these wicked pastors and these bishops and these deacons and these churches, they'll tell you one thing, but they do something else. They'll tell you we love God and God we trust. They'll tell you that we're supposed to be, uh, we're the children of the Lord. Right? They'll tell you that God is in us. But they don't do nothing that the Most High God says. Right? Bring it up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and verse 28. Maybe I have to say, come. Come. Bring it up. Hast thou known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Right? So the Lord don't faint. He don't get tired. Right? He don't go to sleep. He don't need to. He don't need to do nothing. You know what? Neither is weary. And weary means to be tired. Right? Like us, man. We get tired from working, you know, five times a day. Seven days a week. Right? Coming back from this Passover trip, we was tired as hell. We had to get some of that rest. Right? You know? There is no searching of his understanding. And that's the problem with the white man. He thinks he knows God. He thinks that he's a God himself. You know? He giveth power to the faint. Right, he giveth power to the faint. We the ones that faint. Whatever trials and tribulations we go through, family situations, right? Loved ones passing, dying, nephews getting killed in the streets, mm -hmm. drug addicts, alcoholics, right? We get tired of all these situations, but we still got to overcome. Huh? We must overcome. We all. And to them... That have no might, right? He increases strength. And we ain't got no might in this wicked society. They don't create laws for us. They don't create laws to destroy us. They don't, they don't create laws to help us. They got more laws for the damn LGBT community than they do for the blacks and Hispanics. 
the ones that helped build this country for more than 400 years. You got Edomites, or so-called white people, or cops, killing innocent black men in these streets, and they get off scot-free. We on? Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And look, a lot of our young, young ones in these last days, they're dying. They shall faint, they shall die. They shot up in these streets. We on? And the young men shall utterly fall. And the young men shall be killed in these streets. What's happening in Chicago? All these drill rappers. All these gang violence. Right? GBE, 300. All of these different things that they're doing, that they're following. Right? The vice laws, the GBEs, the, you know, all these different disciples, gangs, and all these things that's going on. And they're all used to oppress each other and kill each other. And these are young men with guns. Young men making music videos. Threatening to kill this person, that person. Talking about, hey, I'm going to light them up like a damn pack. I'm going to smoke them like a pack. They have this, I forgot the, um, the artist, he died last week. He was, he was talking shit about another dude, and then guess what? The law killed him next week. And the dude was probably 18 years old. But there's somebody at the door. Yeah. Is that, that the FBI? Is <laughs> 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 that the FBI? Huh? You said black Jesus? <laughs> And it's funny, the Lord said, even you shall faint. But these mighty men right here, these are the youth right here. And the Lord is strengthening them. Huh? Young lions, man. All right? Prove him first. Be on. 
And be not hasty to credit him. And, and what? And be not hasty to credit him. So the Lord said, and that's in Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. That's in the Apocrypha. Right? The Apocrypha. Oh, that's the super right. Read that again, huh? If thou wouldest get afraid, prove him first. You gotta prove somebody. Everybody say that's my man's name. That's my friend. That's my best friend. That's my homegirl. No, they not. They just using you. They're scheming on you. Right? You got people literally, hey, you think this person is your friend, and they'll come to your house, take a pic with you, recording secret recordings and all of this stuff, <laughs> and they go back to where he at, put the video on his, upload the video on his channel, and they talk shit about you. Talking about you a Freemason. They go, what? Oh, I'm a Mason. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sat uh, satanic worshiper. But nigga, I don't even know what you're like, what is you talking about? I got three Bring it out, right? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 19. Open not thy heart to every man. Right, and that heart that also represents the place that you live in, your house. You know what? Lest he requit thee uh, with a shrewd term. Bring it out, right? So basically, bro, like Kev was saying, right, you got a brother that's kind of kicking it, eating EBO lamb with you, right, kind of eating a bit of herb with you, but in secret, they over there recording and find out liberties, bro, huh? right, that's a shrewd term, right, they kicking it with you, right, kind of funny kicking it, right, and then they go back to where they at, and now they talking that stuff, right, they talking that shit, right, right. so, that garbage, right, so, right, lying on you. And, and you're like, bro, what you, what you, the man, the man see you got in your house, a damn cat in your house, and the nigga said you a, you a black mason. Wait, what? How <laughs> <laughs> you mean, I just got that cat yesterday. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's not even mine. I'm holding for somebody else. <laughs> Lying on you, man. Right? What did you got out? Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, 40 and verse 31. But wait upon the Lord. But wait upon the Lord. Be patient. When you try to rush the process, certain situations you're not ready for yet. You're not strong enough to overcome yet. So the Lord got to take this time with you. He got to build you up. Right? Slow and steady wins the race. Time and patience. That's what you got to work on. You want? Shall renew their strength. And you shall get back your strength. What is your strength? The Bible. The laws and the commandments. Got it? Um, Not dying out in these streets. Your strength is you come back to your house while she never shot. Right. That's your power. Let me get Isaiah 52 and verse 2. Those that wait upon the Lord, man. We were stuck in the elevator for 40 minutes, man. <laughs> in New York. <laughs> and we couldn't, no, we were stuck there for 40 minutes. Banging on the doors and pressing the buttons a thousand times. We wasn't going nowhere. We wasn't going a damn way. We could pray this and that. If the most high ain't allowing us to get out of there, we ain't going to get out of there. Same thing as us in America. We ain't going nowhere until the most high beam is time for us to get the hell up out of here. But in the meantime, we got to do what? We got to prepare ourselves. Hold that real quick. Let me get Judges 5 and 11. How you, how you expect Yahweh to come, or as they say, the world called Jesus Christ? How you expect him to come over here and save you and your ass is wicked? When he pop up and crack that style and he see you still eating that pork, you're going to be put in a lake of fire. Oh. It is what it is. And we can't save you. Ain't nobody going to save you. And you try to step in, try to help that person that's eating that pork, your ass is going to be right there with him. You're going to be his next door neighbor in that fight. Huh? Uh huh. Bring it out. Right. 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 Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Right, so, like the brother was saying, right, Christ not coming back for those that's trying to eat pork, get that shrimp, crab, or lobster, right, still indulging in the wickedness of the world, right? It says that the Redeemer, and unto them that were, that turn from the transgression, he's only coming from for those that repent and turn from their wicked ways and come back to the law statute of the commandments. God, there's, there's, no, there's no in between. There's no, no, I know the Lord God, so, you know, I know his name, I know I'm an Israelite. No, even though you're an Israelite, you still have to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you know you're an Israelite, you're in danger. Not in danger of the white man or the Chinese or the Japanese. 
You're in danger of the Lord because the Lord is watching you now even closer. And you got a job to do. And if you don't do your job, he's going to kill you. It is what it is. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to lie to y'all. We're going to tell y'all what it is. And we fear you how about you know shot. Right? Now, y'all, let me get 2 Corinthians 5 and 11. We fear the Lord, man. We know what's coming. And our job is to try to wake our people up and bring them into this house. Little by little, we do our job. Right? Into what? The house of Israel. Uh-huh. Right? Remember what you got out. 2 Corinthians 5 and 11. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. You see? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Right? Jake gets scared of uh, a nigga in the block with a gun. Jake gets scared of a nigga in the block with a damn ratchet. Right? Or with a banana clip or whatever. Or a gangbang or a gangster. Don't be fearing that person. Don't be scared of the white man and the cops. You better fear the most high God. He's a real gangster. You know what? We persuade men. You see? Because we understand the fear of the Lord. Hey, we're trying to help you out. We like, yo, bro, listen. If you if you listen, bro. If you don't let go of that book, <laughs> and and you're gonna keep eating it. I don't give a damn it. You can't tell me what to do. Right? You ain't gonna come in with the dollar. I don't want to talk. Right? Ah, right, you eat that book. Let me see you next year. Let me see if you're still alive. You got a person that was eating pork for their whole life, and now they end up in the hospital recently. Because they don't want to let it go. And their liver is, is failing and everything, their body and organs, everything is failing. Why? Because we're trying to tell them to repent, let go of that abomination so the most high can heal you. But you don't want to let it go. So now what happens? Now you're dying in the damn hospital and nobody can feel sorry for you because we try to warn you. And it's not because of us, it's because the Lord already set up the rules for the beginning. That's a law. Right? Let me get uh, Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. Everything in the Bible, the first five books, everything is law. If you break these laws, especially when you know them, the Most High will punish you. We can't save you. We can't pray for you. We can't help you. You got to pray for yourself first. You got to want it first. Because what happened, especially in coming into this, into this truth, a lot of people, they see people coming in. Man, this person got to repent. I want this person to change. But listen, it's not about you. It's about the Lord. It's not even about them. It's about the Lord. You can want it so bad for somebody else, but if they don't want to do it, you can't help them. Come on. Uh, Bring it out. Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 38, and verse 15. That's uh, this one of the important things that you mentioned. He that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. Bring it out. Uh, so that brother he didn't want to stop eating that pork. He got that message from the Most High. He kind of said, damn the Most High, do what I want. Uh, right? There's no more sacrifice for sins after that, according to Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 26. So it says, he that sins... Against his maker, let him fall into the hands of the doctor. Now your life is in the damn doctor's hands when really it could have been the word that healed you, but you said to hell with the word. Right? So don't say to hell with the word or you're going to be in the hands of the so called white man or whatever man that cares up in the position. Right? Or nigga man supreme. Because, right? The doctor's too long. Right? He's going to put the, he gonna lay the hands on you. What is that hands? He's going to be experimenting on you. Right? Hey, brother, he's crying. His knee is hurt. All right, let me try this. Let me pull that. Let me do this. Let me do that. All right? Let me go to Leviticus 11 and 7. And it's not just pork. Here. We have shrimp. We have crab. We have lobster. All these are abominations to the Lord. Okay. Most high God of uh, the Catholic. All right? Bring it out. Right? This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yeah, he cheweth not the cud, and he is unclean to you. Right, so the Lord said the swine, though it, it don't digest his food. Right? Because it's not made to do that. Because the swine was created by the Lord to be used like a garbage dispenser, to clean up the land. That's his job. You're not supposed to eat it. Because when you eat it, what's that saying? You are what you eat. Uh-huh. And you wonder why you. The, yo, we, we smelled the pork yesterday at cat, man. Yo, we was sick, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> And then the nigga try to finesse people talking about, hey, hey, man, I just, I just made this chicken, man. I just made this chicken right here, man. Nigga, you got that shit from Harold's Chicken, man. <laughs> Why are you lying? So I just made this chicken, man, you know. Nah, brother, the bag is going to be right in front of your face and right on the floor. You ain't made a damn thing. Right? And at the same time, he got the pork and the swine, he's cooking it up and smelling up the whole block. Right? Uh-huh. The Lord said the swine is unclean to you. You're not supposed to eat it. 
The swine is the pork, the ham, the chitlins. You're not supposed to eat it. You know? Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Right. And he said unclean to you. Why? Because God gave us laws. As the Hebrew Israelites, you're supposed to abide by these laws. Now, you can try to run from these laws, but you can't run from a damn thing. Right? Let me get Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What's that song? You can't run. You can't hide. Or, I can't sing, but you know, I'm going to try. This is the Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Bring it out. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Right. Shall we continue to sin? Right? Shall our sisters continue to put on uh, pants instead of putting on a dress? When that is the Lord and Most High God said we're supposed to put on a dress pertaining to the sisters? Right? And we're supposed to have on a pants? Instead of grown ass men in these last days, grown men, six feet eight, brolic as hell, big ass beard, and nigga got on a dress, man. The hell is this? And a blonde hair, blonde wig talking about his name is Keisha. You lost your damn mind. And you expect us to call you that? You lost your damn mind, man. Right? Now, y'all, let me get the army 225. These are laws that we got to keep. God, this is Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 25. The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man. And that's the pants. But today in America, they lie to our sisters and teach her that, hey, it's okay to wear pants. Wear some tight jeans, some apple bottoms. That's an abomination. The most already set this up, you know? Neither shall a man. Neither shall a man do what? Put on a woman's garment. So you can't have no damn grandma ma in the NBA. You can't have no goddamn LeBron James wearing a damn dress. Or Russell Westbrook wearing a dress. Put on a skirt. Or P. Diddy put on a goddamn dress. Dang, I, I'm sorry. You may hear that. They just think his brother's trying to be domineering over the woman. Right, like like she's his slave or you know, he's trying to be over commanding and demanding of her. But the thing is we have to see it from a respect situation. When a woman is modestly dressed and her dress overflows her curves, the dude outside can't see her figure. He can't see her shape. That's usually what make dudes lust after a woman and make all type of derogatory statements because he can see the contours of your curves. And now his lust demon is going, and he's thinking about ways that he can, you know, gratify himself with, with you. But if he can't see that, then he can't comment on it. The other part is, is when you dressed in them pants and he's able to see that, and he says something disrespectful that you don't like, now you're expecting for your husband or your boyfriend, your baby daddy, your boo thing, to come out there and check him. He's already in the mindset of disrespect. You come out there to defend her honor when she's not even honoring herself by keeping what's supposed to belong to you covered up. No other man is supposed to see that. Now you get out here and you fighting with this cat and you end up losing your damn life possibly. Uh, But what Esau did, he made it to where he plays on a woman's want and need to be empowered. You don't have to have, the power that you, you have is in keeping the laws of the Most High. Being submissive, being humble, reverencing your husband, being a help me, being a pillar of rest, being a teacher of, to the younger women. All right, taking care of the children in the home. That's your power. That's the balance that you bring to the relationship of the man being the protector, the provider, and all of those things, the disciplinarian, and all of those things. But Esau, he twisted in their mind to where they're thinking that, oh, me putting on pants, this is my body. I, can, I should be able to dress however I want to dress and wear what I want. That don't give you a right to say this and say that. Well, I know that's the police because he got a police uniform. I know that's a Chicago Bears player on the field because he got a football uniform. Right. That's a doctor because he has a doctor uniform. Well, if you dress like a, what, what is considered to be a whore's attire, I have no choice but to think that's what you are. You in her uniform. That's what she stand on the corner and, and, and solicit herself in. So when you come out the house dressed like that, that's the attention that you're asking for. And that's your profession. Right? That's in Proverbs chapter 7. 
when it's talking about that woman that's dressed like a harlot, right? Uh, let me get um, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. Everything we, everything we go by is by the Bible, the laws and the commandments of God. A lot of people take offense to it because they don't know what's going on. So our job is supposed to teach them and the real men with the words of God. But if they don't like it, they don't accept it, hey, we did our job. The blood is off our hands. But at the end of the day, America won't get destroyed. That fire is coming. That's why Russia and, and, and India and China, right, and even Brazil, even South America, it's like in South Africa, they have something called BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And even New Mexico is trying to sign in with them and Saudi Arabia and Iran. These nations are all going to team up, and they're going to bring nuclear missiles over here to America. And Russia got more nuclear missiles than America now. Iran unveiled a whole city last year of nuclear missiles. China created more missiles now, one for space, one for the land, one for the sea. And that's all in tools too. America. So whether people like it or not, that nuclear missile is coming here. And before that comes, the Lord going to hold back the angels of destruction to make sure we get ourselves right. Prepare ourselves for the kingdom. Those that's willing to do it, they're going to endure. Those that's not willing to do it, they're going to die here in America with fight. That's why they got all these movies to show it. You got Terminator 3, do, uh, what was it, uh, Judgment Day. That's the, that's the movie showing you what's about to happen. Independence Day. Independence Day. 2012. Huh. Yeah. Uh, that's coming. Avengers uh, Endgame. Uh, Avengers Endgame. Uh, 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 right? Like like that song, Snap Your Fingers, Do the Stand. Mm -hmm. Hey, Niggas, hey, hey. Oh, well, guess who's going to snap their finger? Your house shot. You throw Thanos was back, wait till you have snap that thing in that. <laughs> Two thirds gone. Bring what you got out. First Timothy is going out. Bring it out. It's first, it's first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. For you? In like manner also. Sorry. In like manner also, thy woman adores thyself in modest apparel. You see? In like manner also, the woman adorned themselves in modest apparel. What is modest apparel? A woman makes sure she's covering herself up. Put on a dress, put on a skirt, cover yourself up, cover your hair, which is part of the laws as well, too. When you're praying, the woman's supposed to cover her hair. Huh? Mm -hmm. This is the laws of the Most High God. That's how you keep the household in order, instruction. But when you're going against that, what's going to happen? It's going to bring in chaos. Now they got hot girl summer, dark girl summer. Now they got Cardi B. Right? Now they got Megan Thee Stallion. Now they got Beyonce. So my all the single ladies. Now they got Sierra dressing like a damn harlot. Right? These are all abominations, man. So we coming back to the ways of the Most High God correctly. You know? With shamefulness and so really. A sobriety. Sobriety. You know? Not with broad hair or gold or pearls. Jump to the next verse. Next one. But... Which be, become a woman professing godliness. Professing what? Godliness. So the Israelite woman is supposed to be a woman of godliness. And how they become a woman of godliness? By keeping the laws and commandments. Huh? Right. They ain't no, ain't no other options. Right? Let me get Romans 6 and 1 real quick. Ain't no other options, man. That's why we dying out in these streets. Because we're not keeping the laws. It's very simple. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You know. God forbid. What is that? God forbid. Yeah, right now, we, we got grace right now. Because a brother smoking right now, the Lord would have killed you and put you to death immediately. But he's giving you mercy because smoking is an abomination. Right. The Lord, you're not supposed to be smoking weed and getting high in cigarettes. You're destroying your temple. And your temple belongs to not you, but to the Most High God. And a lot of people don't believe that. But why the hell are you smoking cigarettes, which is a damn cancer stick? Right? You say you want to live, but you get it high. You say you want to live to see another day, but you're always smoking a damn stick, a cancer stick or a rat poison that's destroying your liver from within. And, and you know what's crazy? That cigarette is so dangerous, so abominable, that secondhand smoke leads to more death. Than a person with first-hand smoke. So just people smelling the cigarettes that you're smoking, you're more likely to kill them all first before you kill yourself. That's crazy, man.
That's why you got to let that go. Oh, no, he said somebody got to somebody like it. Got hey, hey, you can't make this up, man. You cannot make this up, man. And speaking about the light, let me get back to chapter 5 real quick, verse 16. You can't make this up, man. Look, look, see? You about to come up here and bang on the thing. You got a light. <laughs> right? You cannot make this up. Let's get it. Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light shine. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let your light shine, so let your light shine. Right, let your light shine. Right? Not light with that damn cigarette. We don't? So, so like you, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And smoking cigarettes is not good works. What the Lord mean by good work? Letting your light shine, you keep in the commandments. What is one of the commandments? For the men, make sure you got your fringes on. Same as with the woman. Huh? Um, Make sure you pray, fast it. Make sure you leave your household. Don't be ashamed to be an Israelite. These are the times that we're in right now, man. Right? Drop that. Let me get First Corinthians three and sixteen. The man said, "Let you, yeah, you got a light, yeah, you better be careful. You guys gonna get light with fire." All right? The Lord got all the lights for you. Yeah. Verse sixteen. Yeah. Not no John three sixteen. First Corinthians. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it know ye not that ye are the temple of God. See, we are the temple of God. We are. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And that's the Holy Spirit. The only way you're going to get the Holy Spirit is by you repenting, keeping the commandments. That's the only way. We are. If any man defile the temple of God. Right. The law said if any person defile the temple of God, how you defile your temple? Smoking cigarettes, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobsters, all different type of abominations, you know? Him shall God destroy. The Lord said? Him, Him shall, shall God destroy. destroy. Right. We didn't say it. The Lord said. The Lord going to destroy you. From inside out, from the outside in, the Lord going to destroy you. And we trying to help you out. But, hey, we did our part. We did our job. You know? For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And how do you learn to be holy? By applying the laws and the commandments. These laws is to give you life, not death. Let's go back to Romans chapter 6. In verse 3. And Daniel, let me get Romans 7 and 1. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Right. What is speaking about with baptism? Baptism is speaking about the Holy Spirit by you listening to the word. Now, y'all, let me get uh, John 6 and verse 63. Now, let me get Romans 7 and 1. This is John chapter 6, verse number 63. Right, a lot of people say they go to the church, they just got baptized, right? The pastor that went and grabbed them by the neck and dumped them in the damn water, right? And, and got back up and now he's saved. Hallelujah, whatever. That's a damn lie. Baptisms of you repenting, confessing your sin, and accepting and changing into being an Israelite, keeping the laws and commandments, right? From what you got, John 66. This is John, chapter 6, and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. You see? It is the spirit that quickens, if you don't. The flesh profiteth not. You don't. The words that I speak unto you. The words that the Lord speak unto you is what? They are spirit. They are what? They are spirit. They are spirit and what else? And they are light. And they are light. The words. The scripture, the Bible. This is how you get baptized. This is how a young man changes his way. Right? From what you got out. That's the book of Romans, chapter 7, and verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. Right, as long as you're alive, you're supposed to be keeping the laws. As long as you're alive, you're supposed to be keeping the laws. It's very simple as that. Right? As long as you live. And part of the laws is keeping the commandments. So, uh, yeah. uh, grab uh, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Isaiah 31. Because that's the point, right? We're supposed to be covered with the covering of the Most High, and that covering is the law in general, right? Bring that up, Pastor. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30.
30 and verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children. You said what? Woe to the rebellious children. Woe means death and destruction. The Lord don't play no games. All right? He will kill you. That's how the Lord gets down. He has brought a lot of death on the earth already. Just in the past couple of years, y'all have seen about three different types of strands of COVID. You have seen monkeypox, swine flu, pestilence, earthquakes, tsunamis, and all other sorts of types of things happening on the earth. He's not playing around. Read that again. Woe to the rebellious children, right? Said the Lord. And he said, woe to the rebellious children, right? You're going against his laws. That's how the Lord works. Woe to the rebellious children. Don't be a rebellious child in these last days, right? That goes for the old and for the young. Don't be rebellious against the Lord's words. Read. Said the Lord, that, that take counsel. But not of me. You see, you're listening to everybody else up in the world, but you're not listening to the law of the Most High God. Right. Read. And that cover with the covering. And what? And that cover with the covering. That cover with the covering. Right? you walking in the laws of the world and the ways of the world. And that can even go with the sister, too. you covering with that covering. Right? you putting on that little mini skirt or whatever it be, man. Right? right? Keep reading. But not of my spirit. And, but not of what? But not of my spirit. But not of the Lord's spirit. Not of the Lord's laws. Not of your modest apparel. And brothers, and y'all don't got y'all fringes on. Put your fringes on. Right? Grab the book of, uh, Diablo. Grab the book of, uh, First Peter, chapter 3, and verse 1. Right? Because that's double folk, man. Right? That's two folk. That's talking about the spirit, and it's talking about your covenant. Right? And this was uh, especially for the sisters. Cap just touched on this regarding modest development. Right? It's first Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives. It said, ye what? Ye wives. So we know that this is about the women. Read. Be in subjection to your own husband. Right? That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won. By the conversation of the wife. By the what? By the conversation of, of the wife. So this is how you teach the younger sisters. By your conversation. Right? They may not listen to the scriptures, but they listen to how you carry yourself. Keep reading. While they behold your child's conversation, right? coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning, of planning. They said what? Of planning. See, let it not be that outward adorning. Read. Of planning the hair and of the wearing of gold. Right. Or of putting on of the hair. But of what? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The what? The hidden man of the heart. Let it be the spirit. Read. And that which is not corruptible. And that which is not corruptible. That spirit. The spirit and the flesh are always tangling and fighting with each other. Right, according to I believe uh, Romans chapter eight or uh, Romans chapter seven, right? Christ even says that the that the that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right, so you gonna want to do everything that all these other niggas in the world is doing. Right, that's just your flesh talking. Right, but the spirit wants to follow you out by shut. It's going there. Uh -huh. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. The ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. Read. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Of great price. is The Lord chooses quality over quantity. Right? So the quality of, of your spirit is more than a thousand which is told. Right? It's worth more. Grab Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6 and verse 7. Or Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. In verse number seven, right. the Lord did not set his love upon you, right. nor choose you, to, because ye were more in number than any people. Right. For ye were the fewest of all people. For ye were what? For ye, ye were, were the fewest, fewest of all people. people. You are the fewest of all people. He chooses quality over quantity. Many are called, but you are chosen. Right? You don't want to be one that's not chosen. Right? We want to be called and chosen. That's what we strive for. Right? Another thing we gotta also realize, the reason why I bring out all these laws is to show we have family members 
right, that we deal with. They don't understand how we move. They don't understand the things that we're going through, the things that we're suffering from. They don't understand why all of a sudden we just wake up one day and now we say we Israelites, right? They don't understand these things. But what they got to realize is that, listen, the Lord is waking us up in these times. Let me get Romans 13, verse 11. Right? Why is it we were stuck here for 400 years and ain't nothing changed? Why is it we march every damn day? Somebody get killed, we want to march. Go down to Washington, D.C., Billion Man March. Ain't nothing changed. We did a march in D.C. again for reparations. Ain't nothing changed. Right? We were protesting for the killing of Alton, uh, uh, Trayvon Martin. Ain't nothing changed. Alton Sterling, ain't nothing changed. Right? Eric Garner, ain't nothing changed. Why? Because we're not following the ways of the Lord the correct way. He's going to let the white man whoop our ass until we come back to him the correct way. Mm -hmm. Romans 13 and verse 11. There's the book of Romans 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. We got to awake out of sleep. We've been asleep for too long. We've been distracted. We've been lied to. We think that the white man is our friend. He's the damn devil. And the Lord is using him to punish us until we get ourselves right. Because we messed up. We broke his commandments first. We go on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. But the Lord still got mercy on us. Right? Let me get to Romans chapter 28, verse 54. All the curses that we're suffering, the Lord still got mercy on us. And he's given us a way out. He's given us a chance. But we're going through these situations because of what we did against the Most High God. And whether we acknowledge it or not, we are the children of the Most High God. It is what it is. Right? Let me get to Romans 28, verse 54. The Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. So one of the curses is that we're going to have an evil eye towards each other. Right? That's why we're quick to have gangs. Killing each other, shooting up each other, fighting against each other. Right? Hey, nigga, this is my block. I own this shit. This is my stuff. Hey, why you walking over here? What you, what you said? Right? And you can't even say hi to nobody nowadays, man. Me and black males walking around the block, hey, you had you had people fearing for their life. Because they thought he was going to do something to them. We just say, hey, what's going on? You right? You need help for this and that. We can't even wave hi to nobody now in these times. Because you think somebody's trying to rob you. Somebody's trying to kill you. What happened to that brother uh, two months ago? The man was acting like he was hurt, and the sister was concerned. Hey, you all right? As soon as she got close to him, the nigga, give me a shit. He said, give me a shit. Give me a shit. He tried to rob her. She was trying to help him. She thinking that he's hurt. And then she was like, yo, listen, listen, I'm going to shoot you. You trying to take money, you trying to rob, I'm going to shoot you. She was a Chill. Cop. And she's a cop. He thought she was playing. That was, yeah. That was not too long ago. Right. Was that two months ago for real? Yeah, like two months. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Close up. He thought she was playing. The nigga tried to rob her when, he's trying, when she's trying to help him. And he thought she was playing. And then she busted the cap in his behind three or four times. And he's like, oh, shit, oh. Oh, you shoot me, God damn it, you shot me. Yeah. And now you look like a damn idiot, man. That's crazy, man. This is, this is the curses that we suffer. Look at all the shooting and the violence that's been happening. All these shootouts. Non-stop, all these killings. We went to D.C. Uh, a couple of months ago, and we coming back and for like a damn whole two months. Non-stop shootings. Mass shootings here, mass shootings there. Uh, Last week, they, they, they had four dudes pull up to a block. I think it was like, uh, I think it was at 79th and Cottage. And shoot up the block, four dudes. And they got their, they got their faces on the newspapers and everything. Uh, Literally. You're like, what the hell is going on? These are the curses that we're suffering. You know and toward the wife of his bosom. That's and, domestic violence right there. You know? And toward the remnant of his children. His children, which he shall what? Which he shall lead. Which he shall lead. That's the deadbeat dads in the house. They're gone. Whole time generation that's grown up in houses with no fathers. There's no family structure. There's no balance in the house. Right? The pop either got locked up, out there in the corner selling drugs. Right? Dealing with somebody else. Everything is, everything is all jacked up. This is the person that we're suffering. Right? Go to verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt symbolized slavery. If you got a one dollar bill, check the back of the dollar bill. We got a pyramid on it. Right? That symbolized slavery. You know? 
by the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And that's our true homeland, Jerusalem. That's where we all came from. Us here in America, this is a prison. And guess what? America got the biggest prison in the whole world. Okay. And who populate that prison? The blacks and Hispanics. Okay. That's a curse. And that's all in the Bible. That's in Isaiah 42 and verse 22. The Lord said we're going to be hit up in prison houses. That's a curse. You know what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And who's the one that got sold unto the white men? Transatlantic slave trade. Sub-Saharan slave trade. All these type of different type of uh, movies of slavery. Right? Uh, the Butler movie. What was the other one? Uh, 12 Years a Slave. What's the other one? Roots. What about the other uh, movie? Matt Turner. Birth of a Nation. All these movies are speaking about us getting put in slavery. And when we tell the white man he's a damn devil, now, we got, now he got a problem with us for telling the truth. And he's a damn cracker, man. He's a <coughs> wicked devil and abomination, an abomination in this earth, man. You know what? For bond men and bond women. For slave men and slave women. Don't get it twisted. We still in slavery today. We don't. And no man shall buy you. And we haven't been brought out of this situation to this day. Why? Because the Lord ain't going to allow us to get the hell up out of here until we get ourselves right. Con? Right. We ain't got no other options. And the way to get yourself right is by keeping the commandments. Repenting for the sins you committed against the Most High God. Change your life, change your way, and start to keep the commandments. So we can get the hell out of here. God? God. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now the Lord said, hey, don't follow the unbelievers. Because guess what? Everybody ain't going to believe in this truth. They ain't going to believe in your house shot. Let me get John chapter 1 and verse 10. Even when Christ came down onto the earth, everybody didn't believe him, but some did. But those that believed them, they followed him. And how did they follow Christ? By keeping the laws and the commandments. It was very simple. Bring it up. This is John chapter 1 and verse 10. He was in the world. Right, he was in this world, you know. And the world was made by him, you know. And he knew, and the world knew him not. Right, the world didn't know him. They didn't know that was the Messiah that was around him, you know. He came unto his own. He came unto his own, but what happened? And his own received him not. And that was the Pharisees. That was the wicked. They didn't accept that he was the Messiah, the Son of God. But this same Christ that people think is all funny games or nice and hugging kisses, let's get Luke 19 and 27. Bring it up. We know who we serve, man. We serve in the God of destruction, man. We serve in the God of power. Yahweh by Shimon Mashiach that was shot. Damn it. If you want to root for somebody, you're rooting for the Lord, man. You want 14 verse? Yeah, come. Huh. That's the book of Luke, chapter 19, and verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Right. This, these are Israelites. Come. Huh. These are Israelites. Come. Huh. These are Israelites. That's hanging on their Messiah, their king. And said, We ain't we ain't following him. But they'll follow the white man. They'll listen to Officer Bill, Officer Ted, right? Officer Jack in the Box. But they listening to the black man on your house shot. We don't. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, they oh, 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 he was returned having what? Received the kingdom. The people didn't even know Christ was coming to give him the kingdom. He was coming to teach them how to get into the kingdom. But they spat in his face. He was coming to bring life unto them, but he disrespected them. Right. Same as us going out to these cowboys and corners. We're trying to give people the kingdom. We're trying to teach them how to get into the kingdom. The pastors ain't doing that. They stay in their comfortable buildings. They're not going out to these streets, man. They're not teaching these court ass mothers. They're not dealing with the rain, sleet, and snow. We the ones that's doing that. Because right. the most high God told us to do that. And we're going to follow the Lord God. God, yeah. we know when he commanded these servants to be called unto him. Right, he commanded the servants, like the dude said, you know, he has commanded them. <laughs> he commanded. We <laughs> all? Uh, to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money. And what's that money? The knowledge. God. Right? What's that knowledge? That jewel is priceless. That's this information. That's these commandments. That's the scriptures, the Bible. We all? That he might know how much every man had gained by and, faith. And guess what?
The minute Christ, or Yahweh Shai, as they call him, through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, is true, he will name. The minute he put his life on the line and sacrificed his life and spilled blood, guess what? Everybody owed now. Everybody owed the most high in Yahweh Shai now. And everybody got to pay up. You know what? Uh, then came the first saying. Uh, you want me to go straight? Oh, Luke 19 and 27. Verse 27. But those my enemies. But Christ got enemies. Because if you ain't following him, you was enemies. You know what? Which was not that I should reign over them. You know what? Bring hither. He said bring them all. Bring them hither. You know what? And slay them and, before and, and what? And slay them and before what? And slay them. He said bring them over. Bring them right in front of my face. And I'm going to chop their head off. Bring them right in front of my face. I'm going to stomp them to death. Because he, he left as a sheep and he's coming back as a lion. He left as a lamb and he's about to come back and go lamb. Right? He's about to go crazy. And we don't want no parts of that. We don't want no smoke. Man. We don't want none of that. Right? Hey, a hundred miles if you don't hold on. You think you a gangster? Your house shot is covering on. <laughs> right? Well, stop the straight up in your dome. Right? Bring what you got. Six Corinthians 6. We're about to close out. Yeah. I have a one. Right? Yeah. This is Luke chapter 11. That's crazy. Yeah. I have a saying like, yeah, I was saying enemies now, right? Uh, this is Yo, Luke. Who's that song? Oh, my enemies. They say you're my enemies. Way up. Right? <laughs> hey, man. Bring it out, man. Right? Yeah. This is Luke chapter 11 and verse number 23. He that is not with me. He that is what? He, he that, that is not with me. me. This Yahusha is against him, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Is against me. Is what? Is it's against, against me. Down, man. And, and he that gathered not, not with me scattered. So that's why Yahusha had enemies, man. Because if you're not with him, you're against, you're against him. him, man. That's why he said slay them before you. Because you against him. Like, yeah, you're the You're an enemy. You're the Right? If, if you're not willing to get up in the battle with me, how can I trust you? Come on. Yeah. And that's what us and we Yahweh was saying, man. Come on, So, hey, man, we, we're just trying to move the spirit of Yahweh on the other side, man. The same way he moved, we're trying to move just like that. Because he left the example of us. Let's get there. Second Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll close it off Matthew chapter 12. Right? Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Right. So this is not an offense to anybody. This is what the Lord is saying. Don't follow unbelievers. If you're a believer of this truth, keep the laws and the commandments. If they don't want to keep the laws and the commandments, the law is going to deal with them. The law is going to bring that judgment. But worry about yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't follow the crowd. Come huh? right. on. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? See, how you become righteous? By keeping the laws and the commandments. It's in this book. It's in the Bible. If you need help with this, we can teach you. We can guide you. You know what? And what communion have light with darkness? Right. What, what communication you got with this person that ain't keeping no, no laws and commandments? Right? That's smoking cigarettes. Hey, bro, we about to have this party, man. We about to get drunk. We about to get lit, man. Right? We about to smoke this joint. We about to smoke this weed. Don't go there. Don't follow them. Move in the right-hand side of the Lord. Move in the righteousness. The Lord will take something away from you and he'll be placed with something better. The friends you had in the world, the Lord will kill them off. Or separate them from you and replace you with something better. You'll have family in the truth. That's moving in the right spirit. We are. And what conquer have Christ with Belial? Right. And this is what he's saying. Christ is on righteous this side. Right? He's up the Israelites. That's moving up the light. And he said, listen, what communion, what communication, what gathering do you have with the right hand and the left hand? What gathering do you have? You're supposed to be a son of God and you're still following the ways of Satan. There's no in between. You got to choose a side. Huh? Uh -huh. And even Christ had to choose a side. Close it out. Let me get Matthew chapter 12. This is the book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 48. But he answered and said unto him, uh, verse 46, sorry, 46. Verse 46. And uh, while yet, while he yet talked to the other people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without. Right. So Christ was speaking to the disciples, those that was keeping the laws and the commandments. Right? I was willing to put their life on the line for him inside the house. And while he was speaking, his moms and his brothers was outside the door knocking. We all desiring to speak with him. We all then one said unto him, 
Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without. They're like, yo, they're like, yo, your house are your mom's is out there, right? Your bro is out there, right? You know, desire to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? So he's asking him a question. The people that's in the room with him. Hey, who's my mom? Who's my pops? Who's my bro? Who's my sis? You know what? And he stood forth his hand towards his disciples. And he stretched forth his hand and said to the people around him, that's it, we are. And said, behold, my mother and my brother. Right. So he said, listen, my mother and my brother, my sister. Right, we are. For whosoever shall do the will of the Father. And he said, whoever is doing the will of the Father, which is what? Keeping the laws and the commandments. Following the ways as a Hebrew Israelite, which is your natural born heritage. is your true biblical nationality, we are. Which is in heaven. The same is my brother and sister and mother. Ah. Mm -hmm. So you can have family that's bloodline. Moms and pops and everything. They're your family pertaining to blood. But they're not your family pertaining to the spirit. The truth. The Lord will give you spiritual family that's following the ways of the Lord. And they're going to look out for you. They're going to keep in contact with you. They're going to make sure you're good. going to keep each other in, in, in prayer. Right? Carry each other burdens. Right. It's how family's supposed to move. That's how Christ is moving. Okay. God. Uh, and with that, I'll praise your Allah, Shino Shah, man. Call me a strong. Call me a strong. Huh? Uh huh? All right. Lord, we'll sit down. We're going to take out some and bring you some food. We just got to keep pushing to do our part. Huh? Uh huh? Y'all learn what's happening. Y'all learn some things. All praise.